There were giants in the earth in those days and also after that. Do you believe the red-haired giant story of Lovelock Caves? Yes, I do. If you talk to the BLM, they'll tell you it's a bunch of hokum. There was no red-headed Indians. If you talk to my Native American friends here in Lovelock, they will tell you their parents told about the Native Americans. They were cannibals. They came up from Death Valley, uh, marked the trails, uh, and dug holes in the trails and then covered them up so the natives would a fall, fall in yep. them and then they would eat them. There were giants in the earth in those days and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Back before this mining crap and back, this is not a story that's all. Um, History is documented right. by the Pagan Sonoma tribes. Yeah. Back forever ago, um, there was a tribe of gi giants. They were like, said so they got like eight, ten feet tall. The tallest, some of them were 12 feet. And they were like, had red hair and they were jerks. Right? Yeah. And yeah. They were the cannibals. Yeah. And the pirates like, stop. And they were like, tall. So they tried from the cave and set the cave on fire with a bunch of sage. So like when they were mining back in the 70s when back on and the miners found not only like giant utensils and like shoes of the like bones. So the Syrians came in and took the bones away. Like, yeah, and they're nowhere to be what found. Do you do probably, probably have them hiked away. Yeah. They say you can still hike to the cave and see the silt mark on the walls. From the grip yeah, I heard it. Is that Love Lock or uh, yes. yeah, yeah. It's on my bucket list. Oh yeah. So, uh, the museum, yeah. Lovelock Giants, you know, the red-headed uh, Indian uh, Giants. Right. By the uh, Lovelock Inn. Yeah, I've been in here a couple times, yeah. Well, there's the entrance right here. Okay. Right. Yeah, this is it. This is it. Yeah, you're right. This is it. Oh, man. This is where this thing is. The, the, man, the Marsden House. Marsden House, yeah. Bunch of monument things to check out. Yeah. Wow, what the heck, man? That would. <laughs> see that guy. <laughs> she didn't see us. So, this was a completely chance meeting with Mrs. Devoy Monk. I mean, to think that it's nothing other than God, like, leading us was, would have been crazy because of so many chance circumstances that would happen. Turns out, my friend that was with me, Pat Marchese, from Markswear, he um, he hit one of his better friends. We actually lived with him for a while. His father, so the, his friend's father and mother, worked for um, Devoy's parents back on the ranch back in the day. So she knew um, Pat's friend, which was just like amazing. And then we realized that she was the lady that we saw in one of the articles. Um, that was quoted and had a picture of her. She was the owner of the original owner, or at least her family was the original owner of this this place where the museum is and many acres of land out there. We just thought we'd ask her. So what do you think of the story of the giants? The answer was really amazing because she just gives her facts. She gives her, her ideas on what the facts are, her, her feeling. It's hard to say exactly what they are, but her parents had bones on the property, which you'll hear of much more than just that were up in the Indian cave. Big skeletons. And they called in the BLM, which is a Bureau of Land Management in the USA. It's a government agency. So let's get back to the interview. It's really, really interesting. Do you know that they say that that cave goes all the way to Emily? No, really? Hey. Well, nobody's ever climbed all the way, but there's another great big cave up by Emily that comes back this way. So that's the legend. That's the legend. So I asked you just a moment ago, because we had this long talk. You lived here for years, 91 years old. God bless you. I said, do you believe the red haired giant story of Lovelock Caves? And you're going to yes. give me the answer. Yes, I do. 
If you talk to the BLM, they'll tell you it's a bunch of hokum. There was no red-headed Indians. If you talk to my Native American friends here in Lovelock, they will tell you their parents told about the Native Americans. They were cannibals. They came up from Death Valley, uh, marked the trails, uh, and dug holes in the trails and then covered them up so the natives would A fall, fall in yep. them and then they would eat them. And then the cave is, um, was, they lived in the cave for a while and buried their people in the cave. They found a lot of mummies that had red hair and were over seven feet tall. They were very tall. Wow. They found the mummies there. And But if you go in the cave, the cave is all smoky inside. And then my Indian friends say that they got tired of them killing their people, so they chased them into the cave, then built a big fire in front of the uh, that cave. Now the opening has been made a lot bigger. It okay. was a lot smaller. When my folks first came here in 1945, the right. opening was much smaller, but they've made it Oh, bigger. even then it was smaller, right. <laughs> well, so they opened it up, and um, they built a fire and smoked the Indians and killed them and buried them in the cave. And, you know. I met, uh, while I was working here at the museum, uh, uh, some people came from southern Utah that had been working on the highway between Nevada and Utah and said they came into a big burial ground and there were red-headed Indians in that burial ground and the Indians, uh, and anyway, they didn't tell anybody, they just put them back in the ground and left them. But they're still there, so there's been another people that have found them. Uh, the Indians are buried squatting down, uh, the feet first, then down, and just their heads closest to the top of the ground. Wow. Did that make sense? Yeah. And my f folks have a ranch down in Lower Valley, and sometimes they saw the top of, the, they would hear this whistling sound, and it was the wind blowing, blowing through the skulls because the wind had blown away the dirt. The top, uh... So they were hearing those sounds. They found, my folks were uh, plowing the field and they found a big burial ground and called the BLM to come down and do find whatever they needed to do. And they sent a lady, she came down, took what she wanted through the west restway and left. Yep, never hear her again. Never heard her again. They found some more burial. They had a ranch out at Upper Dixie Valley, and they found some more Indian stuff there, but not much. Wow. Now, did you, this is the legend that I heard that, you know, Indians go howl. Uh-huh. You know why? Uh-uh. But they, Because the giants have six-digit fingers and foot and feet. Oh, I didn't hear that. And they go, how? So that they could, sh yeah, look, I have five <laughs> fingers. <laughs> yeah, that's what I no, heard. No, I didn't, oh, you didn't hear that. that. Okay. No, and you know, because you've, you've been here since 45. Mm -hmm. And I, do you want to state your name for the video? or? My name is Devoy Monk. Okay. I've lived here since 1945. Uh, I have a cousin that married a Paiute uh, Indian lady. And those are the ones that were uh, smoked out the, uh, the, the giants, right? No. Oh, that wasn't the yeah, Paiutes. The Paiutes were, yes. Right. The Paiutes are from Lovelock. Right. And uh, she went, she had dark brown hair. She went to Hawaii for two weeks or a week. When she came back, she had the reddest hair you've ever seen. Wow. So that red hair could be, they might have had natural red hair, or they might have been the elements that changed the red hair. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting, interesting. Well, fantastic. Really a chance meeting we had here in the parking <laughs> lot, wasn't it, you know? <laughs> and, what's new, and your Dutch name is? Brinkerhoff. Brinkerhoff, okay. Yeah, yeah, real Dutch. Or yeah. Dutch. Or, well, they said we came from Holland, but they say we came Germany. from Germany, but Via we moved Holland. to Holland when the, uh, there was a, a religious revolution or yeah. something with the king and with, they moved from there to Germany. That's right, there was a lot of, and mm -hmm. Netherlands was very open even like it is today and you could, well the pilgrims of America, they were living in Netherlands for 11 years 
before they made their journey to America via England uh, again. My family was not, uh, didn't come on the uh, boat, the, what is it called? Mayflower? <laughs> Mayflower. They didn't come on that, but they had to be the next boat over. Yeah, the next, well, yeah. Cause they, the and, next flower. <laughs> and uh, one Brinkerhoff was uh, for Lincoln. He, when Lincoln died, he was in charge of his uh, parade from Washington, D.C. to Smith. Wow. Uh, Smith, Smithfield. Smithfield. Amazing. And were you Illinois. born in... Wow. And were you born in Nevada or in... No, I was born in Utah. Utah, okay. Wow. Beautiful country as well, yeah. Yeah. My family all came uh, to southern Nevada with the Mormons when they came and they settled there and then they... Uh, left there and went to Utah, but they settled in Pot. I had a Brinkerhoff that was, uh, did the ferry across the Lee's Ferry. Right. In there, between Arizona. He ran that ferry for a long time. Wow. I have a lot of history. Yeah, it's amazing. Now I know why you worked at the at the museum here all these years. But You uh, know why my dad donated this building? My dad donated the land and the building to Pershing County. Wow. It was over on the Big Meadow Ranch, and he had it moved over here. Amazing, amazing. Well, very, very kind of him as well. Well, he, that's the kind of person he is. Yeah, because sharing the knowledge is oh. vital. Uh, I think you see it today more than ever. You know, it's just so important not to forget where we come from. And, and, and yeah. You know. I'm very proud of who I am and what I am. Yeah, and you should be. And I really appreciate your time. And I'm very proud that I'm as old as I am and still doing what I'm doing. Yeah, Dad, she's older than you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a youngster. Yeah. <laughs> he he was God. shocked. Yeah. yeah. He goes, oh, no, I'm 80. And he's like, oh, I'm 91. <laughs> well, just, just turned 91. Bro. Yeah. All right, Tavoy. Beautiful. Thank you, Thank you so Beautiful much. Beautiful story. She said right, left, right. She, her directions were a little bit different than uh, uh, Tavoy's. So. Well, there are signs up there. charred charcoal that uh, Mrs. Monk was telling us about. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean that. It's a little bit slippery here with my not perfect shoes. Pretty wild. And the legend is, I mean, this is obviously a big fire and it's right at the entrance. So you don't have your campfire here. You have your cooking, you know, you would think. So it could be the the legend of the fire at the entrance was was a lot smaller then, like uh, she explained. Could have been right here. You get well, I mean, that's a lot of flatness, you know, really. And I have a feeling that... Uh, there's something to the story. There is something to the story, for sure. Yeah, but if you remember that cave near Sand Hill, it was black there, too, where they had... They just, Normal fire safe. Well, it's normal for soot. They cook over the fire, yeah. They use it for heat. Yeah, but that's a little different. This is the monks came to love logs. Oh, it's your uncle. Really? Okay. Long Great. Time. I get you. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Monk. <laughs> bye bye. Let's go check it out. Yeah, we're going to check it out. <laughs> and, uh, the major, uh, or the lady there, she Devoy? knows. Yeah, yeah, Devoy, yeah, she knows. Uh, she knows John. Ca I can't walk anymore, so I can't do much of anything. I can, from here to your building out there, about. Well, you can talk, you have good knowledge. Yeah. That's important. No, I'd be teaching two, two foo rocks, two foo rocks, I remember that one. I'd be teaching mineral identification in Reno for Reno Jim and Mineral Society. That's big. Uh, 
two weeks this weekend. I've been still, yeah. Wow. I've been a member of Rainbow Gym, uh, the Gym Mineral Society for over 60 years. And we will make it out there so you can see his gems. They're amazing. Oh, awesome. Okay, I'm going to get out of your hair. Before Thank you, sir. Yeah, okay. Yeah, go. Yeah. But what's the name of the, uh, uh, what's the name? You got the letter? Leonard, Leonard Rock Rockshelter. Shelter. Right. Rockshelter. And when you come out from the cave? You go right, no, you go, you're on your way to the cave. Oh, on the way to and the cave. you look up there and you see this funny looking rock. Mm -hmm. I can take it right out and show you where it is. Well, right from here. Okay. And you just, you have to, there's some roads. Uh, what, what are you in? We're in that, uh, that Ford S SUV, four, four wheel driver. Okay, okay then you can prop, be careful because you might, they don't keep it there. It's LeBlanc's good secret. We yeah. have lots of them. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a little weird. The, uh, yeah, she described these rocks shooting right out of the ground, and that's exactly what we're Yeah, yeah. Well, no, she, it was her, her pumps, yeah. Yeah, see. What, what, what do you mean, lot where? Right here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it sure does. Well, he said it's from the salt water meeting the salt water and meeting the, the fresh water in the certain sort of structure. Or, I don't know. It was interesting, though. Definitely beautiful. I tell you, on my camera, I can see him a lot better than in real life. I know. It looks like a freaking killer. Really? Wow, and above, well, maybe I'm... Oh, look, at the, look at this, cir a circle, circle, circle. Like there, it's like an animal, maybe, huh? Yeah, Pat and Dad went off road. Tupus Rock that George was telling us about. Yeah, these are just or Webb. Sorry, Webb's his name. Yeah, Webb Barney. Yeah. It's Dr. Barnabas. Oh, wow, yeah. Interesting. It sort of looks like a bream. Yeah, it does. Like the little one there. And salt salt water. It's all stone. <laughs> well, you know what happens. Hey, still brain, works. Right. You get wrinkles for everything. It's not there. Right, I heard that. Yeah, that's if right. If you go to that's the cool. State of Nevada Museum, they don't have anything. None of the skeletons. They have none of it. Just a couple months ago, the um, Historical Society sent out a notification that the redhead giants were not real. Wow. The archaeologists will say no. Wow. First time I ever heard of them was from the local tribe. It was my son's friend, and he told me, you need to go up to the cave, you need to take your digital recorder, you need to talk to them, see what you find out. This is what happened, this is what we have been told. This is not the white man's version of the cave, this is the tribe's version. They were cannibals, they were pale skinned with freckles, they were over six foot, which made them giants. We're not talking Disney giants. No, here. but they were big. But they were tall. They were big. Particularly, uh, yeah. Um, and uh, they would dig up the dead, or they would eat their own dead. They would, if they got in a fight, they would eat whoever they killed. They were cannibals. They did eat human. And these guys got sick of it, so they cornered them in the Love Lock Cave. Wow. They gave them several chances to say they would no longer do this, they would be human, because they, they used to call themselves the humans, but they weren't Indians, they were the humans. Are you gonna be the humans or are you gonna be like dogs? When they refused to answer, they put all the brush in the front of the cave, lit it on fire, smoked them all out, burned them up. That's what she was just telling us all about. Yeah, they wow. killed them. And so I tell everybody, you have to decide what you believe. Yeah. The archaeologists, for whatever reason, do not want this information out, if it's real. There was a second body found on, a second skeleton found on the property where this house came from when they were digging up a field, and it's disappeared. Yeah. But I've also heard... And there's other stories of that in other yes, areas, not I've just... I've also the, heard Smithsonian admitted they destroyed thousands of skeletons. Oh, exactly. You have pictures of old papers of... 
Now, what, pitch, we, real like, or not, that's, yes. tough, that's hard to say, but uh, the bones are missing. The bones are missing. Yeah. Nobody has bones. But I do have pictures of the skull. They're supposed to be a Winnemucca, just photographs of it. Right. Slightly elongated in the back. The jaw is quite a bit bigger than ours. Our jaw sits inside theirs. Wow. Man. Yeah, so they were big. I do have those. They did say they found an 18 inch or a big sandal. Personally, I think it was a snowshoe. Yeah. I have a horse snowshoe upstairs because we did get a they have one of those, they, they have one of those at the, the museum uh, in uh, Carson City. Mm -hmm. The snowshoe or uh, the sandal, the yeah, giant sandal. Yeah. Sandal, yeah. They have like you know, a, couple, a couple of them. You know, I have like little ones. Uh, yeah. yeah. That, that museum, that, well, they have a pretty big one yeah. too, you know. And I, I was looking at my foot actually and, um, you know. I, I That's a good, it's yeah. a good point. It could very well be, yeah. But, uh, yeah I just, but I do believe the story of the Giants. I do believe that yeah, yeah. it happened. I do believe that these guys, because it's not just here. Right. It's, there was, it was in Washoe. It's in California. California, it's in Oregon, Idaho, uh, Ohio. Wyoming, or... Arizona. All Midwest was the big, yeah. but it's back East too. And uh, we're, um, one of our board members who is um, Shoshone um, Paiute, um, he and I are going to put together a packet on Red Handed Giants. Oh, cool. And that way when people come, we can say, this is Here, what we have. Check it out. I wish we had more, but this is everything that we have. And then you guys need to make your own book. Yeah, mind there's up. a lot of folklore around it. Yeah, but... we get a lot of people that yeah. come in and ask about them. And I can only tell you what I've been told. Yeah, no, that's great. Fantastic. I pass on as much information as I have. I'll tell you what I believe. I believe it's true. Yeah. You have to make up your own. Right. Mind. It's hard to say what it exactly is. Yeah. There were some really cool things found in the cave, though. The oldest duck decoys ever yeah. found. Yeah, these are here. Here's right here. Oh you, got, oh, you got the real ones, yeah. Oh, no, the pictures. They're here. all in the Smithsonian. Oh, yeah. That shows you how important they are, yeah. They used to use them out on the water, and I was told that they would actually hide under the water and grab the ducks by the feet when they landed. Wow, with a little straw. And yes, was that the cave up that there? That is a replica of the cave, yes. They're yeah. going up. And that's about the way the trail goes to go up to it. Wow, that's amazing. And after they did this, the Indians continued to use that cave as storage and stuff. Right. It was huge. And she says that it goes all the way up to uh, um, Emily or something, well, right? That's what they. That's a theory. They think there's tunnels in that. Right. Thing. Oh yeah. Because yeah. the cave has collapsed. Yeah. After yeah. I think it was the third archaeological dig, the main cave collapsed. Oh boy. Wow. Yeah. There oh, is an yeah. entrance area, but it is too unsafe to even try and go into it. Right. So they won't. This is the only stuff that is not out of the cave humble seat. This is from local tribe. This, I believe, is all stuff that was found in the cave, is my understanding. Right. We are going to try and get this whole display moved to a new location in the museum. Right there. All right, so we'll make this. So far, it's been awesome. So we'll hike to the cave to this day and see the silk marks on the side. Oh. That's all my bucket list. Hope you all enjoyed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that was great. Thank hey, could you tell us the part about the uh, the uh, giant bones again? I didn't hear. I didn't catch the beginning. Yeah. So um, it's like back before this mining, back before this mining crap, and back. This is not a story that's um. History is stuck right there by the Pagan Sonoy tribes. Yeah. Back forever ago, um, there was a tribe of gi giants. They were like, so they got like eight, ten feet tall. The tallest, some of them were, were 12 feet. And they were like, had red hair and they were jerks. Right? Yeah. And yeah, they were the cannibals. Yeah. And the Pagan's like, stop. They get into the more tall. So they tried from the cave and set the cave on fire with a bunch of sage. So like when they were mining back in the 70s, we're back on in the miners found not only like giant utensils and like shoes, but like bones. So the Syrians came in and took the bones away. Like, yeah, and they're nowhere to be what found. Do you do this? Probably, probably have them locked away. Yeah. They say you can still hike to the cave and see the silk mark on the wall. From the grip. Yeah, I heard it. Is that Love Lock or? A, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's on my bucket list. Oh, yeah. I'm that. fascinated by that whole. There's many old newspaper articles of photographs. And you know about the Afghanistan? 
I think I heard about all of them. The, yeah, the, 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 2001. Yeah, they were like going after Taliban. Yeah, and a military team would disappear. Yeah, the and it was came multiple in. witnesses from different units. Yeah, they were yeah. like, they're going in, find their equipment, and there's a big spear came out, and killed one member, and they're just like, you know, put put the dude down. Yeah. It was like, they were all broke the reports, and the government came in and was like, hey, you guys gotta change this shit up. You can't put this on the reports. Yeah. And that was like 2001, it's just now coming to light. Yeah, yeah. I really appreciate the tour. No problem. Take care, man. Good one. Yeah, see ya. Now, what I find ironic on the same trip I was out there, uh, Pat gave me, he felt, hey, look, there's some petrified wood. We were finding, it, we were hearing about a lot of petrified wood out there in the Valley of Fire in Nevada. And it's about an hour away from Vegas. You should really check it out. It's a beautiful area, extremely uh, interesting landscape. And um, we didn't find that there, but somewhere else out in the middle of Nevada. And um, he said, "Look at that petrified wood." I just, I just tried. And petrified wood was like a theme throughout this this trip because we were seeing these various sites. Then I happened to come across, just the other night when I was back here in the Netherlands after the long trip, I was up about uh, four o'clock in the morning, couldn't sleep, you know, the old jet lag. So I, I turned on the YouTube and recommended a video was a video from um, Megalith, like a Legomythomania UK. And I think Megalithomania is where I originally heard about Love Lake, sorry, Love Lock some years ago. And I will get on the trail of the giants even way before that, which is interesting because now she tied it into Death Valley. I got this one years ago. So back to the petrified uh, rock. I was watching Michael Tellinger slash or line Hidden Origins, Fossils of Giants, Shift in Consciousness, Megalithomania. It's a YouTube video. I'll put a link below. It's like three hours long. And he got into mud fossils, which is a completely different area of, uh, of uh, science, which is really just emerging where, um, you know, much like that, that rock, no, sorry, that, that wood can fossilize, why couldn't uh, organic matter of humans, giants, or other animals get sort of rockified? In mud, so sudden mud flows come, people and animals can get sort of uh, mummified or actually rockified would be a better word. And he gets into that. True or not, it's extremely interesting and just another, like you know, um, fact along the trail or, or or hint to the facts along the trail, combined with many facts, it leads to a very interesting myth here or story. This one right here is really interesting. I'm going to put a few clips below and I uh, will quote some of the uh, some of the more interesting things about um, supposed lost civilizations being under Death Valley. And the whole Death Valley thing was amazing because it always been a lured lure to Death Valley it was there this past summer with the family. And uh, there's some interesting facts about that place. It's really, really um, for lack of better words, a bit magical, a bit extraordinary. It is extraordinary just in and of itself, but there's something about that place. And there's apparently a lot going on underneath the ground there, too. And there's facts of that, because geologists have claimed there's more caverns and caves than we even know about under the ground. And many miners have fallen through shafts into large cavernous um, natural cave systems. Now, whether these stories are true or not, yeah, that some of them are clearly um, uh, exaggerated or people trying to profit off of them. Others, who knows? I mean, there's a lot of, uh, you know, fact out there that would that would be called uh, fiction. Just years ago, things that have happened in, in, in our time on this earth, some amazing things from, you know, just amazing events you would think would be totally not possible have happened or proven to be true. So who knows? Now the numerous uh, old articles on large skeletons found and giants found, or remains of giants, 
are all over the world. Uh, reportedly, some have been disproved. Others are uh, mythical. Others, people claim they're covering it up. And others just are really called giants. For instance, the average height of people in China was quite small, like a 140 centimeters, but they found giants of like 195 centimeters, so-called giants, or much larger people. So that wasn't out of the ordinary thousands of years ago to have um, giants that were just not, you know, huge in length. But when we go into the Bible, it gets even more interesting because there it clearly tells us that giants roamed the earth and they were from Satan. And this is really clear in, in, in Genesis, but also in, um, in, um, in the book of Enoch. And I'll put some of the various verses in here. And it's really quite amazing when you combine all of this together. The story is very powerful. Myth, legend, or fact, there's a trail here to be followed. And I'm following it. Also ironic that this ties into the hollow earth when I did my first experiment or experimental reading of the Smoky God, the supposed true tale of the Norwegian um, father and son who found the entrance to the hollow earth. Hollow earth is also uh, accepted as reality from um, many other religions like Hinduism. And it's very clear that there's something there. Now whether it's completely hollow, there's people who say the moon is hollow inside, the geologists will certainly say that's not true. However, could it be a honeycombed earth? Well, just look around you. There's caves and openings into the earth pretty much wherever you live. Now, not so much here in the Netherlands because we're below sea level. However, I'm sure if we looked hard enough, there's a lot. I know in Belgium, there's just an hour and a half south of here. I went caving. I opened up a little hole. Well, it was about like a man, you know, like a water thing. He like opened, unlocked, opened it. We crawled down in there into this crevice and it opened up into, well, it wasn't really opened up. We just crawled around. It was pretty a pretty unique experience. Um, but there's crevices and openings all around us. France and Germany, Spain, Italy, tons of underground civilizations in Turkey, entire cities. And of course in the US and Asia, everywhere. South America, Guatemala, where I was, Belize, went to the ATM caves, amazing experience. Deep, deep, huge caverns we walk into and it's, um, yeah, the mind's in call to underworld for nothing. So there is a lot that ties into ancient myth, legend, and facts. And of course the Bible talks about this as well. So it really is an amazing journey here that led us to Lovelock this time around again. My first time there. Now this is rather interesting. Now this is once again, you know, take it for what it's worth, but it seems like God's leading me on certain ways here because I'm getting more and more things just stacking up, showing me stuff about giants and, you know, ancient megaliths. And well, check this out. This was a, a map I got at Printing United. I, I cut it out. It's a map of all the national parks of uh, America. Alaska was down here, Hawaii. I cut those off just because I didn't have room on where I'm going to put this. Sorry, Alaska. Alaska has two, the two largest national parks of the USA. But the largest in the continental USA, well, you can see it right from here in these green areas like the Appalachian and some of the Great Smoky Mountains. And over here we have Yellowstone. But which one's the biggest? Which one's the biggest... Green Blosh the Glacier National Park up there, no. Yellowstone, well, it's pretty big. There's a lot of beautiful areas you could, you know, could have made national parks back when. But look at this Mojave Desert, and this also the Mojave Desert, but it's the Death Valley National Park. That's the biggest, largest national park in the continental USA. It just so happens to be, it is the, let's say, cornerstone of many of these stories of giants out in the western USA. This is Nevada here. 
Carson City over here, and um, Lovelock would be up around here somewhere, I guess. It's also interesting when you fly, they show Lovelock on the map. It's just a small little hamlet, really. But nonetheless, Death Valley. Sure, beautiful area. A lot of reasons to make a national park out of it. But also very interesting, the legends of the underground hollow earth, as it were, or let's call it honeycomb earth, filled with the caverns and caves all around this area, really. All around everywhere. I mean... So I just found that very interesting that Death Valley is a U.S. continental U.S.'s largest national park for whatever it's worth. Yeah, I really want to thank uh, the people at the museum for sharing, uh, for, for her sharing her thoughts. And of course, uh, Mrs. Uh, Devoy Monk for her sharing uh, her family history and her Dutch or German ancestry, which uh, I found very interesting myself as well, being a a German American Dutch, or I don't know what I am anymore, but I'm living in the Netherlands now for many years. Um, and stories, like one, my my good friend back in Boston told me, Italian friend, he said, well, actually it was his father who told me that. He said, David, everybody has a story. And that's what it's all about, people's stories. The legends from the native tribes there, the people that are carrying them on to this day and sharing the information and going to the sites and seeing for your for our for myself and for yourselves via the video and hopefully you all get the chance to check out um, sites around you or get to travel to sites like this because it really is a, a blessed experience to see um, like the Lovelock cave and then to find the, the Indian cave up the hill which was very difficult to find yet we found it once again maybe only can it be by the grace of God to find such a thing because it was very we didn't have internet out there it was very uh, roughly described to us and we uh, we found it and we hiked up it with my 81 year old father uh, who thanks to God can still hike around and hike, he did a great job and it was an amazing experience we found some some of these uh, special types of rocks that are only found out in the west I think it's called Tulum something like that a very unique shape and form as you'll see so it's just an extremely unique experience and the petroglyphs there just give a whole extra dimension to this whole story um, one of the things with the petroglyphs we found later on after the uh, printing united training show we continued a couple day journey and we learned of um, uh, at, the, at the mount irish petroglyph site we saw there that the number six is used a lot and we all know that Indians said how, and that was, they put their hand up, and that was the show, the legend goes, that you have five digits. Legend has it that giants had six digits. So if a giant put up his hand, you saw six fingers, you know that was a, of the giant, um, you know, um, uh, bloodline, and not to be trusted as far as the um, other indigenous people were concerned because of the terrible things that happened. So the six-digit people were not well respected and, and you know, were, were feared. That's why the legend goes, they went, how? Hello? And, you know, like this, to show that you have um, five digits. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know. That's a legend. And that I found that very interesting. And when you see some of these petroglyph sites with uh, six occurring time and time again, why six? I mean, five would be lots of us, you know, one, two, three, four, five, or ten. But six and twelve seem to show up a lot. Hmm, interesting, isn't it? Anyway, the journey continues. Oh, yeah, another six. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, without yeah. a doubt, two, four, six. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I've been through there. You see a couple other, uh, you know, counting administration, which is also... A creature with some paws or a being with some digits but that one is just incredible and this this does look like it, the left side chipped off that would be six uh, lines again and you know that one is definitely the icing on the cake in terms of wow you know to get to that one 
you would logically have to stand here. Now, if I jump over there, I mean, I can't, but I'm on the same level here where I am now. I could get my hand maybe to the middle of that at the reach down as far as I could. Maybe three quarters of the way, but that'd be like as far. I have to go on my tippy toes to get up there. I couldn't get to the head of that thing. So that'd be a very tall person. Or the rocks, of course, shifted. Now, that's another total possibility. Uh, that's not out of the question. You know, like that big one down there. But anyway, it's just one unit there. Yeah, I mean... And then... I mean, you, as I just, just were, oh since boy. we're talking uh, apples to oranges and my 5'10 frame here... Oh, there you go. 5'9 frame, whatever you want to... At whatever age I am. <laughs> okay, hold on, Scape. We shall do it like so. There you go. Good job, Pat. And we are getting up like this. Where's she at? I'll put your hand up straight above your head. Like that? Yeah, you're about halfway. Like that? Yeah, you're halfway. And that's stretching it. That's here, tippy toes. Yeah, yeah like I said, tippy toes, you come almost to the head. Yeah, and that's and that's 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 not a, a, and that's I not mean, chiseling. Draw that thing, no matter what, you kind of come back. Yeah, and you got to be on your back with your right hand or whatever. Yeah, that's oddball. Right. I mean, that's very difficult. Now let me see what's up around here. So, what's your take on it? There, I mean, uh, I think that I think that you know these might have been relatives of the redheaded uh, giants in Love Rock. Potentially. That's what I was, you know, kind of. I'm not 100% sure, but just throwing it out. They're, they're, they're overtly big. I mean, they're very big in compared to the other art. Giant ass, but it's different than the owl looking thing, but they look scary regardless. Long necked. Yeah. Very long necked. Uh, le looks like legs. Yeah, those are like leg things. And, and digits, whether it's three, looks like three on each uh, hand. Yeah. It does. It does. So, which is, which I is, think that that's, that, that's more humanoid than animalistic. Or Nephilim. Oh, yeah. I mean, of some sort that just, you know, three fingered. Absolutely. Three and three is six. I don't know. Anyway. It's hard to say, yeah. Hard to say, but it's just amazing, that isn't it? An abstract way of doing things. They just would simplify it all. Yeah. You know, to their easiest understanding, right? Right. Pretty cool rock, too, in general, with all the different mosses and stuff. So three, four, five, six. And some kind of a triumph. It's like a snow cone, kind of like. Yeah. And then this here, six, two. Yeah, and same sort of figure. Four, five, six. But yeah, a little... A little different. Wow. After filming this, I came across this this, this video a, a guy I subscribed to. Very nice uh, man, Michael Larray. He's in uh, San Diego. And he, right after I was done with this, you know, a week after I was in Love Lock, actually two weeks after, but I started doing like the background stuff. And then I, I came across this like the next day The Book of Enoch, Jurassic. Abominations, and he goes into the whole book of Enoch and the giants and how they were fallen angels that came down to to take wives of their own and impregnate them, and they made this giant race. And he gets into he gets into mud fossils like I was talking about. It's just amazing how God works. It's such a blessing to have this synchronicity. Um, anyway, I recommend you check out his video. He's he has some really good Bible teachings and. This one is just really just amazing and so timely and so fitting uh, to tie into this video at the end. So take care. God bless and have a great day. Get approved. Get content. Be creative. MarkSquare.com